Now glassing for elk or any big game animal for that matter, it doesn't require a degree from MIT. And that's a good thing for me because I don't have one. But it does require just taking more than a glancing sweep across that mountain. Now, I've got a few tips to share with you on how I get the most out of my glassing sessions. First, I get a firm foundation. That foundation is my rump today. I'm using my knees to rest my elbows on and I'm solid. If you don't like that, you can rest yourself over a backpack or even lay prone on a rock. Number two, just glance at your viewing area with the naked eye. You never know when you're gonna see the patch of hide of an elk or the flicker of some movement through the trees. Three, pick out all the openings out there. Those are suspect locations where elk will like to roam through, feeding or stretching, just moving about on the mountain. Four, glass with purpose. Don't be like a puppy looking at a butterfly in the sky. No, figure out a grid system. Either go left to right, right to left, up or down, down or up, however you like to do it, but glass every square inch. And when you do spot something, hey, don't just drop your binocular. Drop your binocular, but keep your eye focused on the location so you don't lose that location and mark it. Now, get your spotting scope out. Your spotting scope will help you decide if that flicker was a chickadee or an ear, or if that glint was ice or maybe an antler. And lastly, when you're done glassing, well, glass again. You couldn't possibly have seen everything out there. An elk move on and off all day long. Spend another 20, 30 minutes, up to an hour more, depending on how big that hillside is. And speaking of glassing, yeah, it's time for me to get back after it in elk country.